7. Examples of QMM Meta Interpretation Here we give a very brief account of the application of QMM to several well-known QM interpretations, particularly those which have been mentioned in the forum discussions of Foundations of Mind. Please bear in mind that all mainstream interpretations of quantum mechanics are confined to the linear semi-model of M and require adjustment in order to conform to the conspansive manifold. These interpretations will be treated as tersely described in Nick Herbert's respected and highly readable classic quantum reality, Beyond the New Physics, Herbert, 1985. Cope and Hagen. Bohr and Heisenberg there is no deep reality. While quantum indeterminacy leaves ample room for generativity, making use of it would require acknowledgement of the non-terminal and non-physical domain N and the deep structure of M, which this interpretation explicitly denies. This is unfortunate, as Heisenberg erred in placing his potenti between the idea of an event and the actual event, in a strange kind of physical reality just in the middle between possibility and reality, Heisenberg 1958, page 41, thus explicitly calling ideas and possibilities physical even when they are physically unrealized and therefore not physically real. This, of course, is semantically inconsistent, if a phrase like physically unrealized ideas and possibilities has any content at all, it cannot be physical in nature. We may thus infer, for the sake of consistency, that potenti are metaphysical, which means that QM is either metaphysical and thus reliant on the metaphysical structure of reality, or merely physical and therefore needful of augmentation by deep reality in order to explain how reality identifies itself. Mere probabilistic tendencies are by definition inadequate to determine individual state transitions, and even if they are included in QM, something more is required in order to account for the self-identification of reality. It follows that the statement there is no deeper reality than QM itself cannot be mapped into the supertopology, and must therefore be excluded from our understanding of reality. Observer Created Reality John Wheeler reality comes into being through the observations of observer participants. Reality corresponds to the metaformal supertautology, or to its physical domain T-sigma, creation is mapped to generative grammatical production by gamma mu, and observation is mapped to secondary and tertiary identification events, i.e., to quantum measurements, and generically, to bare tertiary interactions. To the extent of its description, Wheeler's interpretation meets the standards of QMM, reality can indeed be generated by telluric observers. Consciousness-dependent reality Von neumann wigner stapp consciousness creates reality. Insofar as the generic definition of consciousness overlaps with the self-identification of the ontic identity and its internal self-images, it passes the test of metaformal consistency for basically the same reasons as does observer-created reality, this. Approach merits additional explanation. Associated with the VNWS interpretation is a process description of quantum dynamics. Dirac originally noted that there are two ways in which a quantum system evolves. One, the wave function deterministically explores all possible interactions as it propagates, and two, a single possibility is randomly actualized. In his book Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, 1932, John von Neumann elaborated on these modes of evolution, observing that two distinct alternating processes are transpiring, process 1, a non-causal, non-deterministic process in which a measured particle randomly assumes one of the possible eigenstates of an observable property determined by the relationship between the particle and a measuring apparatus, and process 2, a causal, deterministic process in which the wave function evolves between measurements according to the Schrodinger wave equation. Henry Stapp, 2007, further develops this concept by defining four, four, processes as follows. Process zero, some process that is not described by contemporary quantum theory, but that determines what the so-called free choice of the experimenter will actually be. Process one, the basic probing action that partitions a potential continuum of physically described possibilities into a countable set of empirically recognizable alternative possibilities. Process 2, the orderly mechanically controlled evolution that occurs between interventions. Process 3, the process that selects the outcome, yes or no, from the probing action, the choice of nature QMM maps stat process 0 to a generative event associated with a secondary teller endowed with free will, generative capacity, process 1 is mapped to the expansion of the measured system in an eigendesis of the telonic observable, syntactic or semantic property. 
In the generative syntax of the teller, priming the system's wave function for collapse, process 2 is mapped to the underlying telic. Recursive process approximated by the Schrodinger equation under ectomorphic confinement to the surface of the conspansive manifold, and process 3 is mapped to the combined action of the primary and secondary tellers on the system, which triggers the collapse. In short, QMM maps all four of STAP's processes into the conspansive manifold. Bohmian mechanics Early David Bohm quantum particles are ordinary objects steered by guide waves in a non-local pilot field. Bohmian mechanics is disallowed by QMM for the following reasons, 1, it is a so-called realistic interpretation of QM which holds that reality exists independently of the observer, precluding the crucial dynamical functionality of primary and secondary quanta, including conscious human tellers, 2, it is deterministic, thus violating generativity, 3, it is fundamentally dualistic, holding the particle apart from its pilot wave, function, in such a way as to imply ontic inequivalence, and, 4, it is often considered to violate the locality principle of classical physics, no superluminal influences, by requiring that the force on a point particle instantaneously depend on the precise location of many other particles in the universe. Yet it is also widely considered to violate Bell's theorem by incorporating this non-local information as hidden variables which account for its determinism, D. S. Bagnat, 1979-1989.in. The conspansive manifold, problem 4 is at least partially obviated by extended superposition, which distributes information on distant particles to every location within range of their wave functions, the scope of their inner expanded states. Extended superposition means that no violation of locality is necessary. However, while the pilot field to some extent approximates the extended superpositional structure of the conspansive manifold, it falsely objectivizes particles by turning them into ordinary objects which compactly persist between linear ectomorphic state transitions, and thus commits to a form of dualism fundamentally separating medium, the pilot field, from content, the particle. Pilot waves supposedly guide particles, but in order to do so, must be determined in advance of the states of the particles themselves. Thus, field and particle are dynamically as well as structurally distinct. This is inconsistent with conspansion, whereby points of the conspansive manifold interexpand to become their own media. Triality demands that the particle and its wave field coexist within a single identity in conspansive alternation. The implicate order, late David Bohm. Reality is an undivided wholeness. This interpretation is rather nebulous, but if held apart from the insupportable aspects of Bohmian mechanics, it passes in several important respects. For example, it is explicitly generative, the implicate and explicate orders correspond to LS and LO respectively, its wave function entanglements mirror the extended superpositional structure of the conspansive manifold, and the hollow movement, Bohm, 1980, resembles the conspansive evolution of the manifold, including telic recursive LS. Low feedback over a metaformal semantic network of wave function entanglements and the terminally restricted flow of advanced metacausal data from LS to LO. While it lacks an ontology of its own due to insufficient logical support for its conceptual ingredients, Bohm's undivided wholeness qualifies as a limited success by QMM standards, Bohm and Hilly, 1993. Many Worlds, Everett Reality is a multiverse of many alternate universes. In order to circumvent the reduction of the wave function, this interpretation reifies a higher-order wave function, the so-called universal wave function, and associates it with physical reality as a whole. Then it lets this vast metaquantum evolve deterministically, splitting into separate universes at each quantum event. First, the good news, Everett racked up an impressive QMM. Score just by proposing the existence of a cosmic wave function. With some adjustment, QMM can map it to the primary quantum of the metaformal system, i.e., to the ontic identity as a whole. But unfortunately, this is where the correspondence ends, for wave function collapse is a basic feature of the conspansive manifold and cannot be avoided. QMM maps wave functions in general to identities consisting of superpositions of the M-semi languages LS and LO, and these are not merely optional. Secondly, the evolution of semi-language superpositions is neither temporal nor deterministic but generative, and when it comes to generative events, there is no way for the cosmic superposition of possible universes to see them coming. 
It could only wait for them to occur and then pretend that elsewhere they didn't, splitting the metaverse into the universe where the event and its outcome have occurred and an alternate universe where they have not. Moreover, it takes more than a cosmic wave function to make an ontology, and now that a proper ontology has been discovered, it is evident that there are ontological criteria that Everett failed to take into account. At the very least, the coming into existence of any given alternate universe depends on these neglected criteria. Quantum Field Theory, QFT while QFT is a complex and powerful extension of the formalism of QM, its inclusion here is justified by the fact that it incorporates QM and thus involves some amount of QM interpretation. Simplistically, QFT replaces particles and wave functions with quantum fields as primitive objects, defining the particles as excitations of the fields which emerge analogously to wave function collapse while permitting variation in particle numbers. This much is consistent with the structure of the conspansive manifold, at least where tertiary syntactors need persist only for the duration of a single state terminated by generative or annihilative events. But as the conspansive manifold evolves by conspansive self-dualization and generative potentialization actualization cycles terminating on interactions of its quantum point identities, it symmetrically dualizes the relationship, making the field internal to the points just as the points are internal to the field. The quantum fields of QFT, like the elementary particles they replace as fundamental entities, are thereby identified with the points of the manifold, i.e., with tertiary syntactors, and thus equivalently reduced to pointwise syntactic distributions. But while both QM and QFT are confined to the open top layer of N and thus superficially excluded from the deep structure of M, they are now embedded in the conspansive manifold, a quantum metafield where physical systems superpose directly on deeper levels of metaphysical structure and dynamics. Lastly, it is perhaps appropriate to mention the existence of a handful of interpretations involving Lagrangianism, example, the path integral formalism of Richard Feynman, advanced causation, example, the transactional interpretation of John Kramer and its PTI variant by Ruth Kastner, or both at once. The coupling of Lagrangianism and advanced causation may seem quite natural in the linear ectomorphic space-time dynamic. While Lagrangian mechanics requires that the initial and final states of a moving object be determined before a definite linear path can be calculated using the stationary action principle, an advanced cause serves nicely as a final state. However, in the absence of determinism, it is given by assumption rather than any sort of explanation, and so for the initial state as well. This is no less true in the quantum realm, where classical determinism is out of the question, the initial and final states of a particle must be determined before its path can be determined and used for the ectomorphic transmission of causal influences. This is the case whether causation is considered to run forward or backward, and whether the initial or final point is designated as the cause or effect. I.e., whether determinacy is retarded or advanced. This spells trouble for retrocausal theories which rely on the linear ectomorphic transmission of advanced influences along definite linear paths, even if this is wishfully attributed to, example, the back action of mind on a pilot field. The first requisite is to establish a generative relationship between minds and fields, and this something that only the conspansive manifold can provide. In. The CTMU, determinacy in either direction of time is superseded by generative metacausation, in which the generative action of talic identity operators gives both the initial state and final state by projecting them onto a timeline from the depths of the conspansive manifold, and which, if desired, can be factored into advanced and retarded components in space-time despite the inadequacy of space-time alone for mental causation. All QM interpretations are subject to this kind of analysis, some for better and others for worse. Because QMM stands on the CTMU metaformal system and its logical inductive groundwork, it is unconditionally validated by the intelligibility of reality and cannot be falsified by empirical induction. In short, just as with the metaformal system itself, there is no way out of it. 8. Summary we have explained how QMM maps certain key concepts of the QM formalism, along with several popular interpretations of QM, into the supertautological CTMU metaformal system, a true ontological metalanguage formulated in such a way as to logically support reflexive attributions of existence associated with the high-level self-identification of reality. 
By virtue of this mapping, QM itself, along with certain hypothetical ingredients attached to it by various interpretations dubiously claiming to provide it with an ontology, finally have a true ontology against which they can be tested for relevance and consistency, and where those passing the standards of QMM may come to rest, concisely. The development can be described as follows. Any interpretation of A and B, or vice versa, is a correspondency between A and B, C, A, B. Obviously, both A and B must be defined with some amount of coherence and precision before the correspondency can be mapped. In any interpretation of QM, A equals QM and B equals reality as a whole. The problem has been that while the mathematical formalism of QM was well-defined, reality as a whole was not, in part because its description changes or has the potential to change with each new scientific theory or experiment. This is no longer the case, reality can now be unequivocally characterized as the supertautological and therefore rationally undeniable CTMU metaformal system, and the true correspondence can therefore be established. By definition, QMM is that correspondence. All that remains is to apply QMM to the beasts of the quantum jungle, namely, the often strange and apparently wildly conflicting QM interpretations that have been freely proliferating at the frontier where physics meets metaphysics. It has just been demonstrated how this is done, with examples, nevertheless. Let us explain once more how it was done in the clearest and briefest possible way. The CTMU metaformal system is an intrinsic language, the involutional coupling of a language with a manifold whose points are the elements of the signature of the language, or in semiotic terminology, its signs. This manifold is dynamic, with dual outward and inward gradients accounting for gravity and the relative linear motions of physical objects, the curvature of space-time equates to the inner expansive gradient of the conspansive manifold, which is dual to the time-like collapse gradients of T. Its evolution can be described in terms of two operations, conspansion and telic recursion. By virtue of conspansion, the evolving manifold closely resembles the existing formalism of quantum mechanics, and by virtue of telic recursion, this formalism can be carried into the linguistic aspect of the manifold and the deep structure of the metaformal system. For now, we refrain from asserting that the metaformal system is a theory of quantum gravity, but this will no doubt eventually emerge. Thus, QMM is not to be confused with any mere interpretation of QM, examples of which relate to QMM as input. Rather, QMM is a metamodel which carries QM and its various perspective models, speculative interpretations, into the supertautological ontic identity. In short, QMM is what QM must become if it is ever to qualify as a truly reliable source of insight and authority regarding deep metaphysical questions of which the answers require certainty, generativity, and true ontological support. Of course, there is much more to this story. But owing to space limitations, further details must be set aside for later presentation.